Uh, a force fitness instructor uh, is the commander subject matter expert on all things physical readiness, uh, physical fitness, injury prevention, uh, diet and nutrition. Um, he's the commander subject matter expert. His job is to take the commander's intent, the mission essential task list, and assist the commander in developing an, an overall physical fitness ready plan, readiness plan for you know the, the battalion, the unit. So there are certain aspects, uh, you know, physical fitness, uh, diet, and nutrition, uh, injury prevention, and uh, fatigue management. Those are kind of the core concepts of the program, uh, the methodologies, if you will. Um, so the number one thing, the most important thing that they, they teach at the course, uh, the, as far as the methodologies, is injury prevention. All right, readiness is a huge issue for us right now. Uh, so teaching Marines how to, you know, stay fit, you know, 150 or well, excuse me 360 degrees fit you know mentally fit physically fit you know all those things tie together so uh, when we're talking injury prevention we're talking about lifestyle changes um, eating the right way getting enough rest um, and then making sure you're preparing your body prepping your body for the day's activities um, and then when you're done with the day's activities those physical workouts that you're taking the time to build in some time to, pr to allow your body to recover so um, injury prevention um, like I said, fatigue management, all those things tie together. So those are the core competencies, the kind of the methodologies to the program right there. Uh, right now it's a six-week course um, in Quantico, Virginia at the, uh, at the MACE there, um, the Force Fitness Center Readiness Center for Excellence. Um, and what it is is it is basically the course is designed it's not what you think it is. So a lot of Marines, they think they go to the course and they think it's going to be like every Marine Corps course, right? That you go and it's going to be six weeks, the most rigorous training you're ever going to get. You know, they're going to tax your body beyond its belief. You're going to be, you know, stressed out and, you know, all over the place. You're going to be worn out at the end of the day's work. The PT is real, but it's the type of PT you're going to love because what you put into it is what you're going to get out, right? You're not competing against anybody else in the course. Uh, you're competing against yourself, right, to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be, right? Um, and it's what we need right now in the Marine Corps. It's information, right? Uh, it's teaching Marines how to leverage sports science um, and, and fitness technologies, you know, what's modern, what's happening right now, and leveraging that to make your Marines the best tactical athletes you can be, right? Um, so you go over biomechanics and kinesiology, anatomy and physi physiology, learning all about the human body, um, how it functions, how it functions properly, um, how it looks and how it functions when it's, proper, when it's not functioning properly, when you're doing things wrong, when biomechanics are incorrect, um, and then how to correct those things, how to coach them, how to teach them. Um, and those are the, the big things, right? Uh, and then, of course, nutrition. Marines always have questions about what they should and shouldn't eat. Um, there's a lot of uh, fad diets out there right now, so they cover all those things, what's good about them, what's bad about them, and how to it, talk to Marines about uh, having a balanced uh, diet uh, and why that's important you know, to physical readiness. Um, I saw the, the initial MAR admin that came out. Um, and I actually, when I was at security forces, uh, my previous duty station, General Neller was the commander of MAR4COM. Um, and he came down to the reaction force facility and he had lunch with uh, some of us down there. Um, and I remember him speaking about um, the program then, or speaking about how we needed to shift our focus for physical fitness in the Marine Corps, um, and talking about um, how we didn't have that skill set, um, and we probably did need it. Um, and then when the Maran came, came out, I was like, wow, that's awesome. He, he actually did it. Um, so then uh, I heard about the course, uh, and I knew that we had a seat, um, and I approached S3 about it, um, and I was able to get in the course, luckily. There are some requirements. Um, you're not required to have any kind of instructor background. They, they recommend it uh, just because it makes it easier to transition into that teacher, trainer, you know, coach type uh, background. Um, 
You have to have uh, first class PFT and CFT. It actually has to be a 250 or higher for both of those events. Um, you have to be uh, PME complete as well. Um, and then you have to have a, a recommendation from the commander. Uh, then I go to my S3. Um, I, I get my, my command screening checklist done. Uh, go to medical, make sure that I'm uh, medically able, that I'm on, on lighter limited duty or anything like that. Uh, make sure I'm, I'm PME complete and then it gets routed through my chain of command, uh, through the Sergeant Major and the CO. Um, they sign off on it. Uh, I do an inventory PFT and CFT to make sure I'm physically capable of meeting those requirements regardless of what my scores say. They want to make sure that when I go to the course I'm able to meet those requirements. Um, and then once the CO signs it, I'm ready to go. Uh, my advice to you, one, is to uh, reach out to your unit FFI if you, uh, if you have one. Uh, reach out to your S3. They should be able to put you in connection with your FFI. Um, if you don't have an FFI in your unit, um, you can reach out to the local Semperfit um, in, on your base. They should be in connection with the FFI because the FFI works closely with those, uh, those, those units at every base. Um, and if they can put you in touch with an FFI, I would get in touch with an FFI and try to get some of the pre-reads. Uh, Gunnar Sarnpacheco, uh, who is one of the instructors at the course, actually sends them out once you're in the course. She sends out some pre-reads. Uh, those, uh, those subjects, biomechanics, kinesiology, those aren't one-day courses. Um, and if you don't do the pre-reads, some of that stuff can go over your head. So uh, I would take some time. That, that's probably the most demanding thing. Like I said, the PT is it's intensive and it's tough. But if you're able to meet those requirements, then you should be able to get through the PT, the PT stuff. The, the, the mental aspect, the learning, you know, comprehending those concepts, that's the most difficult thing. So I would try to get a hold of that material and do some pre-reads. Yes, uh, you, you could also attempt to get HIT certified. So Semperfit can help with that. The HIT certification, uh, a lot of the movements and the techniques um, are the same. So a lot of the language is the same. Uh, a lot of the biomechanics that the HIT instructors teach are going to be the same. Um, so the sooner you can indoctrinate yourself to that process and that language, um, it's going to be a lot easier to coach them. Um, so when you go to the course and you're going through those, coursing exer those coaching exercises, the biomechanics make sense and you're able to repeat them, you know. Uh, I will tell you that I was one of those Marines. I was excited about um, the idea of the program and what it could be. So I really wanted to go. But I really still in the back of my head was worried that it was going to be uh, a break off session, right? I'm also a martial arts instructor, so I had been through that before. Um, and I wasn't, at this point in my career and age, I wasn't, you know, wasn't sure if I was prepared to go through that for six weeks. But I really wanted to try, right? Um, and it wasn't that. Um, I would say it was, um, it was really a breath of fresh air. I really enjoyed my time there. If I could go back, you know, now that they've certified the course and solidified the curriculum, if I could go back, I would. Um, just because there was that much information um, and I was that passionate about it, and I can tell that the instructors were passionate about what they were teaching. Um, there were times in the course where we would just take, you know, we would take an hour, uh, you know, where we had squad instructor time, and we would just talk, you know, talk about all those things, talk about all those questions your Marines ask you, because Marines ask you about meal plans and workout plans and all those things, and you have those questions as well. And as a staff NCO, you're supposed to be able to answer those questions for them, right? Uh, but we don't really have a repository for that knowledge, but we're building it with the FFI program. Um, and, and that's the big difference is it just, it was so much information, information that I had been seeking for a very long time. Um, and it wasn't um, just six weeks of just, you know, pushing yourself to the brink. For me here, uh, it was once again, helping the commander try to figure out how we were going to, you know, try to standardize what the command was doing. Um, every command is going to be a little bit different, and the opportunity to standardize that is going to be a little bit different. So when I sat down with the training officer here, Captain Baudet, um, and we talked about Colonel Gad's intent for the program, um, we talked about how we could affect that change. So the biggest thing was BCP and RCP. 
you know, those are the Marines that are struggling the most. Those are Marines we, we want to make sure get to the FFI as a resource first. How do we make that happen, right? Um, we re rewrote the BCP and the RCP order to, uh, to integrate the FFI and, and, and his responsibilities into the program and to make sure that those Marines knew who he was and, you know, knew who I was and that they knew what the schedule for RPT was. And how we would track that, um, how we would train them, um, and what other knowledge we would get get to them. After that, we talked about how we would affect change, you know, on a bigger scale, MAR4 four, MAR four PAC. So um, how I would, you know, interact at Battalion PT to get the word out about the program, you know. Um, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a PT, that I would spend some time kind of sharing some knowledge about the program to get Marines interested, um, and that uh, after the PT, I would reach out to some of the NCOs uh, to try to build more momentum for the program. So one of the things we did is we organized some more HIT certifications up at the Sipper Fit Center. All right, so uh, right now I have 11 uh, supplemental instructors, so 11 sergeants that have either been HIT certified in the past or got HIT certified here. Um, and I spend some time just about once every quarter uh, meeting with them, talking about the program, the methodologies, uh, sharing information from the course or information from some follow-on courses I've done. Um, when I do my uh, quarterly meetings with a SimperFit you know, health promotion, uh, I bring that knowledge back to them to share with them so that they can take it back to their sections um, and share it with the Marines in their sections and, you know, as we attempt to grow the program in that way. Um, not necessarily reporting requirements. Um, it is an inspectable item, uh, so uh, we do have to show uh, what we do and how we track it, um, and I have a calendar for that. The supplemental instructors have a calendar for that that shows who attends PT, um, and then I will build out the six-week block programs, and I will share it with them so that everyone knows, you know, what we're doing and that we're on the same page. Um, and then there's a requirement as well, you know, for me, how I track RCP, and that I show up to some PFTs to make sure um, we're meeting the, the intent. Because uh, there's already an opportunity to prove. You know, Marines are rough and tough. Marines are the, the greatest fighting forth on, on God's green earth. But if we can get better, we should get better, right? And there's an opportunity to leverage, like I said, those what's current in sports uh, science and in fitness, in the fitness industry right now, we should do that. We should do that. Uh, you think about, uh, you know, football players or, you know, athletes, right? Uh, teams are constantly seeking a way to gain an edge over the competition. It should be no different with tactical athletes. You know, as we leverage technology to improve our equipment, we should leverage technology to improve our most important asset, which is, you know, the Marines. Uh, simply because, you know, Readiness is, is key, right? Um, one of the major things about the program is that um, no one's doing it the same way, right? Uh, everybody's idea of what is physical, physically fit is a little bit different based on where you're at, right? Um, based on what that leader thinks is important or what they're good at. Um, and we also because we're these alpha individuals, we measure uh, physical fitness sometimes as toughness, right? How much can you put your body through, right? Um, and that's not necessarily a good measure for physical fitness, right? But it's ingrained in us. So building that injury prevention into it to keep a Marine in the fight, to keep him ready, uh, is important because it kind of takes us away from that thought process, that uh, Pushing through it is, you know, what we do. Um, toughness, I always tell the Marines, toughness is not a leadership trait, right? Uh, judgment, integrity, those are leadership traits, right? So as we build that into who we are as a culture, as part of our, our, our physical fitness, um, injury prevention should be at the top so that we can keep Marine in the fight, keep him training, and leverage him as a tool, right, to, uh, to, to win fights. So in force fitness, they teach it a little bit differently than M MAI. Um, that's one of the things I notice. So you, you don't necessarily delve into those, those specific uh, you know, types of fitness as much. 
you talk about how being physically fit affects those other types of readiness, right? Um, a Marine who is physically fit and makes lifestyle changes to be physically fit makes better decisions, right? Um, a Marine who's conscious of the way he feels and reacts to the way his body feels probably doesn't drink as much. He probably sleeps better, right? He probably tries to be in bed at a decent hour because he wants to be rested because he cares about his performance, right? Um, he probably puts better food into his body, which means uh, he's healthier. Um, and if he's healthier and he feels better, there is a scientific connection to his mood, right? That he's uh, not depressed, that he feels better about himself, about his current state in life. Uh, so we talk about it in those terms, um, similar to MAI, but a little bit differently about how um, physical readiness affects those other type of readiness um, and how they're all tied together. A dynamic warm-up is basically the opportunity to prep your body for uh, movement or workout or stress, right? Um, so thermal regulation is a word that they use, right? So dynamic warm-up, thermal regulation, warming up the body, right? So when you warm up your muscles, um, they'll come a little bit more viscous so that they can stretch a little bit more. And if they stretch a little bit more, then uh, there's less uh, chance for injury. The four phases of strength training. So first you have foundational strength, right? That's just in the beginning when we first get a Marine, we're just building that foundational strength, getting him used to, used to moving in that fashion, the exercise we're do, doing, building those neural pathways. Every time you do a rep, it sends a message from your brain to that muscle that says, hey, it looks like this. During that time, we're really, really focusing on form and foundation, right? Because we want to teach them to do it the right way. So after you get the foundational strength, um, you got a... Uh, Maximal strength and explosive power, those two kind of work together, right? So maximal strength is a preparation phase for explosive power, right? So maximal strength, you want to get used to lifting heavier weight, you know, to pressing that rate, uh, pushing it over a period of time in preparation for explosive strength when we're going to go into those Olympics lifts and really using that whole body power and strength to move some, 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 some weight around. Um, and then after that, you got muscular endurance, right? That's a moderate to low amount of weight over a period of time. We want to really stress those muscles, tack those muscles over a period of time. Core stability because that's where uh, the, the big word, stability, right? Number one uh, key to the program is injury prevention, right? So if you're strong throughout your core and your stabilizer muscles, a lot of Marines, once again, they think core is their abs, right? But it's so many more muscles, right? Um, and it's all those muscles that stabilize you when you're moving, you're pumping iron, right? And when you are, if that core is strong, then you're not going to injure yourself because you're going to be stable. You're going to have a solid trunk. You're not going to be left to right, you're not going to be wiggling, that core is going to have you locked in, um, and it's going to allow you to move a lot more weight than you, than you normally would. I think they, they're just looking for Marines that are passionate about, you know, teaching and training Marines. They're looking for those, those, those Marines that are passionate about being, you know, trainers and mentors. Um, there's Marines there that look from all walks of life. Um, all MOSs, um, all shapes and sizes. You know, they're not looking for what you would look for as the, uh, you know, prototype Marine. You know, six foot lean, uh, athletic looking. You know, there's, are, there's guys that look like me. There are female Marines there. Um, there are Marines that are long, tall, short, and wide, right? Um, they're looking for people, Marines, that are, are passionate about the subject, uh, that want to train Marines and want to see us get better. Those are the kinds of Marines they're looking for. You joined the Marine Corps because you wanted to be better than everybody else around you. Um, this program doesn't exist for any other purpose but to make us as the best we could possibly be. Like I said, the goal of the program is to make your Marines the best tactical athletes they can possibly be. Um, so if you're passionate about this, about that, then 
this is the way to go. Uh, this program uh, is going to give you everything you need, all the tools you need to put your Marines in the best position to be successful. Um, and it changes them, right? Uh, we've gotten away from uh, some of those, the days when we all PT'd together, you know. Um, almost everybody at the course who wasn't an instructor would probably have told you that sergeants more than likely lead PT for them, right? Um, and I was kind of the same way before I went. But now I'm at the forefront of that, and I see the effect it has on my Marines to PT with me every day, all right, to go through it with me every day. Um, it's changed them, um, and not just physically, and that's important. For my Marines specifically, what I've noticed now is um, it's not my program anymore. So they've invested in it. They've taken ownership in it, right? Um, I've seen them start to take the program, not necessarily change it. They're still following the methodologies, but as far as doing their own investigation, you know, uh, Marines w approach me, hey, Gunny, I'm looking into a plant-based diet. I've been reading this and this and this and this, right? Those type of things are important because it tells me that they're making lifestyle changes, which is the goal, right? It's not just something we do, you know, every morning at 0630. What I've seen is them take ownership of it, uh, what it means to their career, their lives, and implement it on a wider scale, and that's important. The difference I can see is that is the number of Marines that have started to approach me for individual assessments. Um, so uh, I assumed it would be junior Marines uh, that had questions about certain things, but I started to see um, senior staff NCOs and officers start to approach me about, hey, you know, can you talk to me about some of that mobility and recovery stuff you do? You know, I've heard about it, I've heard about the foam rolling, um, but I've had this issue going on and, you know, I'm trying to see if there's something else I can do, right? Um, so I've started to be able to set some appointments with those, those Marines to talk about their concerns. And, and for me, that's the biggest thing, because I, I didn't think that uh, the Marines at that level would respond to the program um, in that fashion, but I've started to see it happen. So uh, dorsiflex is the big one. Um, you'll hear that everywhere, but once again, you, you heard it at the course. Um, so it's one of those things like uh, it's just one, it's catchy. Uh, Marines hear it. It's a buzzword. You know, sometimes they use it when it's not appropriate, but hey, if it's if they're using it, that means they're paying attention, right? Uh, so dorsiflex is the big one you'll hear. You know, active core. Um, you know, tabletop. Those type of things. It's it's. It's words that I think they teach us to use on purpose because they're coaching cues, right? So they're important for a reason, but they're also a little bit catchy, so Marines pay attention to them. I mean, the, all the sessions are a little bit different, so the flow is slightly different, but generally they're all the same. Um, it's going to start off with some education in the, in the beginning. Always we talk through um, safety, obviously first, um, and then after that we're going to talk about the workout, what it's going to consist of, um, and then usually coaching any big biomechanic movements, things you're going to see if we're focusing on a certain body part, what that should look like, um, and maybe then just practicing that a little, you know, coaching cues that you're going to hear. If you hear that coaching cue, what it is I'm looking for. Um, and just those type of things. And then after that, uh, what I like to do is um, I always have some type of warm-up game. And then we get into our dynamic warm-up. Then the task-specific warm-up where we prep the specific muscles that we're going to use for that workout a little bit further. Um, then we'll get into our workout stressor. Um, and then after that, we'll get into our, you know, our auxiliary movements where we work the other body parts that we're not focusing on. Um, and then we'll end it with an optional finisher. Well, optimal finisher is what I like to call it because it's, it's never optional. We're going we're gonna to get that finisher in. That was the optional finisher. Um, that's kind of uh, like the cherry on top, right? And that's uh, the, the methodologies for the program, how we run the program, the card systems, they're all kind of similar, right? And uh, the Marine Corps obviously wants FFIs to stick to that program. That way we're all on the same page. We're all using the same language. We're all using the same system. But the optional finisher is a, a way for the FFI kind of to put his little spin on it uh, without going too far. So this morning, uh, the, the Sally Challenge was kind of the way we finished our workout. That was my cherry on top um, to finish the workout. It's an opportunity to, to spend whatever you got left 
to close out the workout right before you get into you know stretching and foam rolling, get that recovery piece in. So what it is is there's a song, Bring Sally Up, Bring Sally Down. Um, every time the song says Bring Sally Up, you're in the up push-up position. Every time the song says Bring Sally Down, you're in the down push-up position. But obviously when you're in the down, you're not resting on the deck. You're just as low as you can be without touching the deck. And then when the break hits and the chorus comes in, you're stuck in that position for however long until you hear up or down again. And it's about three and a half minutes of pushing or not pushing. I will tell you that um, my body hasn't felt this good in a long time. Uh, I, I didn't uh, expect, I expected to come back from the course a little bit beat up, but I absolutely didn't. Um, I felt phenomenal really. Uh, my joints, uh, all those things felt really, really well. Um, and the information I learned there, I was always a pretty fit person um, and I ate well, but um, it forced me to look at you know, was I optimizing what I was doing? You know, was it best for me? You know, I spent some time, maybe the first month here, just doing assessments on myself. Um, I went and got my blood drawn, um, had a whole, you know, lab workup done. I went and saw the uh, dietitian on, on Tripler. I went to uh, health promotion myself, um, just to, one, to know what the process was in case I needed to, to get a Marine through that process, but two, to do some self-evaluation. Um, so I took that time and doing it every day um, has allowed me to just become a better coach, right? So not only have my Marines gotten better, I've gotten better at trying to get it across my message. Uh, I think he's lost about 20 pounds since from the day he checked in um, until now. Um, and more than anything, uh, I think it's, you know, how hard he works, right? So in the beginning, it was difficult, and he was pushing through, trying to get through it. But now you can tell um, he wants to be better, like he's hungry for it, right? Um, he's always questioning me for tips. So he's a big guy, right? Um, on Thursdays, we do speed and agility. And for bigger guys, excuse me, those agility drills can make you feel kind of awkward, right? You're stepping in and out of ladders, you're jumping over hurdles, you're dipping in and out of cones. Um, but I will tell you that no one works harder than he does. Absolutely no one. Uh, I can tell in every drill he's focused, he wants to do it as right as he possibly can. Um, he's down on the ground trying to get as low as he can, touching cones, he's tapping through every ladder, and he's pushing himself to be the best version of him that he can possibly be. Um, and that's probably the one that sticks out the most to me is uh, Sergeant Carrera. The intent is for it to be at that squad company level. Um, you know, that's going to take some time to build that cadre of FFIs. Um, but that would be best. I would recommend that, I think, at the, the, the company level. Uh, you know, if you could have one in your squad, it would be good. But the company level should probably be about right. Um, for a place like Mar 4 Pack, obviously that's a little bit different. It would be great to have an FFI in every section. Uh, I don't know if that's realistic necessarily. Um, but here, uh, you know, if you could have three, I think that would be, that would be best. Uh, and then you could train those supplemental instructors to take that direction. Um, there's always going to be missions. You know, we're not, for, we're not for here, so things are going to happen. I'm going to get pulled, uh, and someone's got to be able to, you know, carry that baggage. Uh, because one, you're a tactical athlete and you should train like one, and two, because you joined the Marine Corps because you wanted to be better. Um, and the goal of this program is for you to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Uh, and that's what's in it for you, to be better today than you were yesterday. I would say simply because it's, it's going to affect readiness on all levels. Um, you know, you, your Marines should be fit. Um, they should be physically fit, mentally fit, spiritually fit. Um, and all those things, like I talked about earlier, are, are tied together, 
are tied together. There's no way for a leader to impress upon the values and cultures, uh, or excuse me, the cultural values and morals that he wants uh, for his section, his, his shop, his platoon, his company, um, than out on the PT field. It's just how we're built. Um, the opportunity to do that is out there in that grass. I mean, science even says that you're more receptive to knowledge after physical activity. It's why in MAI they teach you to give tie-ins after the workout, right? Um, so that's where we, you know, we we make those cultural changes. You know, uh, we have some things going on in our in our core right now that you know aren't that glowing. So we got to make some adjustments. Um, this program is a part of that, um, and any leader who cares about the Corps and cares about you know, their Marines should want to be a part of that change. Like I said, I, I think the big thing is I've had several Marines ask me about the program with the interest towards going to the course. I think the, uh, the sergeants, the NCOs, are a little bit more gung-ho about it. They're chomping at the bit, waiting. You know, initially those three beta courses were kind of just for staff NCOs, so they were waiting to get their opportunity. Um, but the staff NCOs that have uh, voiced, you know, their interest in it, I think there's always been that level of concern that, you know, uh, do I want to commit to that? You know, is it going to be one of those things, you know, where I gotta, I'm going to get beat up for six weeks? And I would just reiterate to them, it's, it's not that. It's absolutely not that. Um, and if you have some interest, uh, seek me out read the MAR admin, um, and go to the course. Go to the course. I think the sergeants are going to get there uh, because, like I said, they're gung-ho. But I think it's important that this level of knowledge, um, that the staff NCO you know, Corps is involved with that, that they had that level of knowledge, that they're able to articulate it. Because in the Marines, the expectation, or for the Marines, the expectation is that when I go to Staff Sergeant, I go to Gunny, I go to Mass Sergeant, they have the information. Um, so we should have it.